I mean, it was motivated sequence. It's essentially a communications framework developed by this guy called Alan H. Munro that helps make our speeches or presentations a lot more persuasive. It's divided into five parts. First is grabbing attention, then is establishing a need, followed by establishing a solution, visualization, and finally action. So we're gonna get into each of these points. Hey, my name is Radeep and I'm the founder of Frantically Speaking and I love learning about effective communications and sharing those learnings with you so that you can level up your communications game as well. So let's start with grabbing attention. Now, it's pretty standard when it comes to speeches or presentations that the introduction needs to be gripping enough. And I've noticed this as well. If I do not grab the audience's attention within the first few seconds, I've pretty much lost them for the entire speech. Now, when it comes to introductions, uh, there are three things that we can keep in mind. One is to either surprise the audience, to entertain the audience, or to make them think. So, for example, we can surprise them with a shocking fact right in the beginning. We can entertain them by either making them laugh with a joke or by getting some sort of ludicrous prop on stage. Or we can make them think by starting off with a question or making them visualize the story. I think the topic of introductions and speeches is so vast that we can make an entire video on that separately. But for now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below, which is a link to one of our most popular articles on our blog, which takes you through different types of introductions, specific examples of speech opening lines, and how you can incorporate them within your own speech. So go check that out. Now we move on to establishing a need. This is essentially the challenge problem within your speech. And it's very important to frame this correctly because it can essentially turn a disinterested audience member into an interested listener. So in a business pitch presentation, this can be the gap in the market. In a tech talk, this can be a world environmental crisis. It's important for us to identify what problem we are solving for and framing it in a way that gets the audience to be like, hey, okay, this is a real problem. And the idea is to make them eager to learn, uh, to listen to the next part of your speech, which is the solution. Now, when it comes to the solution, this is the body of your speech. A lot of your research time and writing time will go into the section. But when it comes to the delivery aspect over here, I've noticed that as long as your introduction and your challenge is established properly and in an interesting enough way, the solution pretty much takes care of itself. The audience is already pretty interested in knowing what you have to say. So we just need to make sure that this part is not dragged out by keeping it crisp, but talking only about the relevant information. We're packing it up with anecdotes, facts, stories, and all of that good stuff. And this part will pretty much be good to go. In most cases, you'll already know what the solution is. You'll probably already have some understanding of the topic. So it's not, um, it's not gonna be very difficult to really write this part out. It's just about making sure that it's, that we're not being repetitive about adding anything over here. And now we move on to visualization. Now we've grabbed the audience's attention, we've established the need, we've given them the solution. Now it's time to make them visualize what the world would be like if your solution was really applied to the situation. If you're pitching a company to a bunch of investors, this is essentially the part where we talk about what the world would look like if they all bought into our product or service. If you were giving a speech on global warming, this would be the part where we talk about what the world would be like if everyone did their little bit to take care of the environment. And finally, we come to action. Now it's pretty standardized to have a call to action at the end of a speech or presentation, but I'm surprised to see how many people miss out on this point. After you've given an entire speech, the audience wants to know what they have to do next. What action do you want them to take? Do you want them to give you a call, register somewhere, take an action in their own life? What is it that we really want them to do to move closer to our solution? I usually try and keep just one or maximum two call to actions in a speech. I've seen people give three, four, or even five call to actions. And it's just too much for the audience to take in. We have to keep lesser call to actions and we have to remove all obstacles for the audience to actually take that action. We have to make it as simple as possible for them to do what we want them to do. And those are the five steps to Monroe's motivated sequence. If you have any more questions when it comes to this particular topic, we have an entire in-depth resource just on Monroe's motivated sequence. It has examples, outlines, and a much more elaborated version of what we just discussed over here. So I'm putting the link in the description below for that article. And if you have any other questions around communications, public speaking, or anything in that realm, go check out franticallyspeaking.com. We have a bunch of articles, resources, in-depth guys dedicated all towards that topic.